to do a ton of damage. Last pick, Death Prophet. You were talking about push. They're all what in, better man. way to cap, cap it all off than with a Death Prophet exorcism? This is Death Ball. This is straight up Death Ball. Every single one of their heroes is a pushing hero. But I think they can also four-man while TB farms. They can do that, and this is high tempo, strong laners. Usually when you worry about some kind of heroes being picked, you have to consider the lanes, especially when you're playing versus EG. But all of these are strong lanes. Death Prophet does fine, Boo and Shaman should do fine, TB and Ench should dominate. So they already have the tools there to death ball successfully without losing lanes. Now Arteezy may need to find a hero that can either slow it down or speed it up in terms of combat. Maybe go face first into some fights. Uh, of his signatures, most of them have been banned out. I'll go for the Nature's Prophet again. Okay. What did you think of the Nature's Prophet? Like in a, in a vacuum type environment where they didn't have to deal with a carry axe? You think it was still the go-to pick for them? I think it was a fine pick. I, I really do believe that they just were not prepared for how fast that axe was going to be online. Mm -hmm. And that team fight mid turned turned that game upside down. Had it gone even slightly differently, their draft would have looked a lot better than it did. So in this draft, LGD doesn't have the ability to defend towers as easily as before. It's very committal. If they defend a tower with their abilities, they're on cooldown for the next one. And so I do think playing a high tempo lineup makes a lot more sense in this game, and that's just because EG had the last pick on the Furion. So there's no proper response from LGD because they literally can't. So and what better? And Furion's an active hero, and you, like I said, AA needs to play with active heroes to be fully effective. And it looks like they're also ready to win lanes and brawl. Like I can see this game going both ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go EG with this one. I think they win lanes, and I think their heroes can play really fast in this game after winning lanes. I'm going to go LGD because I will never root against them. That's pretty reasonable, And their draft still looks honest. good. Yeah, they look, they look like the just absolute best team in this tournament, but we'll see. That's how teams have looked in game one and all of these series so far, so yeah. we'll see. All right, then. We have another setup for a spicy match. Again, things looking relatively even, but the way LGD has been going throughout this tournament it might be another quick 2-0, but we saw how these types of series played out in Singapore. First three games may not even mean anything. Well, first two and a half games. Let's pass it over to our casters, Cap and Kyle. Four out of five of the series that Evil Geniuses have played in their lower bracket run have gone the distance. 2-1, the only 2-0 they actually got was up against Nigma. So, Evil Geniuses, they've certainly shown that they know how to be able to bounce back from a loss. In fact, that was something that I really loved to hear about from Curtis, and he was talking about how these players, every single one of them, they say, this is the best team I've ever played on. He says that's usually a sign of having good mentality in the team. I would agree, but I'm a bit concerned for their body language. I mean, EG, they're typically more subdued, you know, not often smiling in the pre-match, but definitely a little shaken after that last loss. I think their draft is a bit better here. Abed Storm, hero he played almost well enough to win the previous major final. And PSGLG, overwhelming amount of team fight and crit has walked up high ground. And very likely is going to be given away the first blood. Oh, he tried to find the opening, but no. I cannot believe that angle got blocked. I thought for sure he was going to be able to roll away there, but nope. First blood going to be given to none other than Ame. Of all the people to give it to. Yep, and Ame Terrorblade at that, Kyle. Yeah, we had discussed thinking Axe might be banned, but EG took it away immediately with the first two Viper. Oof. I think primarily out of fear of that Axe, the Nether Toxin uh -huh. disabling spin. So, you know, end of the day, you're not picking Axe into a Viper. Also, definitely a hero that could bully him out of the lane if they were to give it to Ame on the one position. I think Fly actually started off trying to body block a little bit. But yeah, that's going to be uh, LGD starting off with not just the first blood on Ame, but three bounty runes as well. So... Evil Genius is going to have to do pretty well in the lanes to start things off to be able to offset a uh, small little advantage for LGD. So what is our lanes? I saw they were going to go for the Brewmaster. Oh, top lane. Ice, Ice, Ice being pressured nice and early by the trine lane of PSG LGD. A second kill for LGD. They've always been so good at that. Historically, whenever Ame's on the team, they give him the last hit. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you saw there was even covered. If that hadn't finished it, they would have 
picked it up with the Shaman, so it wasn't like there was a risk of Ice escaping. And I like this move. They start with the Tri-Lane. Not really much. Uh, I think Ench could probably do some damage down bottom, but not at level 1. That's the thing. Sure. I mean, much better, much more important to be able to keep the Viper shut down yeah. against a Terror Blade than to make sure that your Brewmaster is having a perfectly yep. A-OK -okay time. This is how you used to beat off Lane Viper. They hear, oh, hang on. Nice, nice kick. rolling kickback. Doesn't quite hit the Remnant combo, but they still have the kill. That one's going to go to crit. Look at the lane. 2-0, <laughs> yeah. 9-3 and three on Abed. And he's getting a full what? wave deny under tower. That's crazy. I think Abed's a little mad. And he's got a lot of reason to be mad. In fact, the reason for him to be mad at LGD dates all the way back to uh, TI8. When two of these players, Jin-Q as well as uh, PYW, first showed up on the international stage for Team Serenity, they managed to go through group stage, ended up in the lower bracket. They played that best okay. one stage. You know who they played against, Kyle? Fnatic. Fnatic, that's right, Fnatic. Lost that best of one against Team Serenity, and that Fnatic had Abed on it. It's come a long way since then. Oh, that roster was star-studded, but never really got the results that this EG lineup has been able to accumulate mm -hmm. during 2020 and 2021. So far, so good for EG in a good spot in all three lanes. But the trouble with offlane Viper has always been what happens if you just get owned in the laning phase. You're a lane dominator, and yeah, you can always go recover the jungle, but that's not ideal. Oh, roll through, won't land. Great gank from crit, though. I think for him, well, for his team, it's going to be crit on the earth, which is going to have to step up. They want to W and Ame? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> okay, not only is he, I'm dead, he, like, he's dead, but now he has to walk back to lane because of that very, very awkward TP play. Yeah, that was... I mean, he bought, he spent his gold, I believe, before he died, so that's oh, something, I mean, but... <laughs> yeah, he, there goes your first blood advantage. He, he could have just TP'd on the roll, you know? Like, it would have yeah. been fine, but... Yeah. You know, just not really respecting the dive, but that's the power of Viper. He hits level three, and suddenly TB left alone is in big trouble. Surprise that PSG OGD didn't think about just keeping a tri lane. Uh -huh. AA, a strong support, but it sounds as if he'd be able to stop Faith Beyond alone from just pulling creep waves. Mm -hmm. Which and is uh, what he's doing right now. This is the sort of lane Nature's Prophet thrives in. You, know, you don't really mind the enemy offlaner. And they can't really kill Treants. So mm -hmm. you see him just zoning out the Shadow Shaman, basically with just his AA and, and Treants. So very nice for EG so far. Ahead in, I would say, all three lanes. Looking at it, specifically mid, Abed is going off. So I, I thought game one was really interesting because one of the things that Evil Geniuses has done very nicely this event is be able to have this like super aggressive, like the safe lane Furion, it feels like three aggressive cores, three semi-core sort of lineups and run at you, take over lanes and such, like they did at the Singapore Major. And they've also managed to fall back on the harder carry. And I thought game one, I felt like that concept, that first one, got countered so hard that they were just going to back up and go for the hard carry again. But it seems like Evil Geniuses still have faith in this sort of three semi-carry sort of lineup. Yeah, and I like it a lot more in this game because I think the support duo has just been straight up upgraded. Okay. Earth Spirit, better than Clock, and I think it's necessary to have their catch hero on crit, and I'd rather have an AA than a Lion. I know Lion, mm. incredibly high priority, but this hero just seems bonkers. And really, well, I mean, another TP to the tier one, but this time in time. Uh, PSLG, they took Death Prophet into AA. I, I consider AA a pretty damn hard counter because you remove drains. We've discussed it throughout the group stage, but drains feel like the real ultimate on Death Prophet. It's what give her that unkillable uh, strength within a fight. Mm -hmm. And AA ult just removes that. And suddenly, EG, they have so much catch from such a far range. You know, maybe Viper is just sitting there in the lane. Crit in the trees, he can roll in no problem. RTZ TP's in, Storm zips in. A, a blast. You have four heroes damage output, but they only represent one threat. <laughs> Uh, crit and Ice 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 have no, no heroes to kill, so they go ahead and kink the, the big Eagle Song creep. Faith block. Beyond, body blocked in, Arteezy, he's shown the body blocking skills before in this tournament, most notably that Terra Blade illusion play that he had, and uh, does so again against Faith Beyond's Brewmaster. Jin-Q though, setting up, you could see the ward behind the tier one tower here, looks to be able to see a hero rotating in, and with this exorcism and with his disables, get a kill off of it. And they're gonna be able to find it though. They're gonna roll on in now, but it's gonna be a little bit shy. Three heroes here, Jin Q. 
He's actually going to be gone on by Abed. Nobody else from the team is going to try and help him out. Not even the Death Prophet. Just ran for the power runes and wasn't even there. They lost the 50-50. Oof. Will Abed, he's going to charge uphill. He would love to steal the bounty as well, but he's going to leave that for his Earth Spirit. A little drive-by scoop. And pull the creep wave too. So this is looking real good for EG. At the moment, it's at, at least one. Well, okay, let me rephrase. It's better than last game. Yep. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah. And Ice is six. Yeah, and he's very likely dead. Nice rotations here from PSG LGD. They still managed to pick up the kill on Y. Ice 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 will enjoy a bit of bump in the experience for that. Faith Beyond gonna be gone on though, as again. Three heroes are postured on one side of the map. Both teams have a similar idea here. The laning phase is beginning to break down. Let's just provide overwhelming numbers to a certain side. Yeah, but this is going much better for EG. They got a tower. You can feel Arteezy definitely feels a lot more powerful. Instead of a Sand King who's already level 7, it's a Faith Beyond Brew that's just level 4. And the hero doesn't really have that easy farming mechanic to come back into the game. He's going to look to accelerate through team fights, but needs ultimate to do that. In addition, Abed, I think most comfortable of all heroes available on Storm. And he's off to a great start. He owned his lane. Already level 8 and top net worth in-game. Now, of course, we heard the stat uh, earlier, thanks to our friend Liamir, who gave us the stat on uh, which objective first taken has the highest win probability, Shin Q. Going to be run down here by the Shadow Shaman. Now, the mid tower is a very frequent go-to, and it's why uh, it is so valued. But the off lane tower is another one that usually has a very high win rate um, as the first objective taken on the map. And it usually means that you won your safe lane so hard that you got an objective you usually shouldn't be able to do. Or in this case, because you've got a Fury on safe lane. Yeah, it happens like we saw it in this game, which is just for free. It's like, yeah. oh, well, we're owning so hard, the hero's not here, we'll just keep going. And Unfortunately for PSGLG, they don't have great pickoff. Their support duo is somewhat worthless until the later portions of this game. Terrorblade, he's popping meta just to farm camps, and that's their gank attempt. Jin Q walking forwards to try and hex Shackle onto a storm. Other than that, Arteezy, all the space in the world. He's actually rushing Maelstrom this game before Witchblade. They're actually going to roll on a Terrorblade wow. with meta out because Abed felt so strong, and they were right. Crit and Abed execute a metamorphosed Terrorblade who thought he could just farm up Ancients. And he thought wrong. Didn't have Sunder skill, typical Ame, maximizing for his net worth grind. And this time it's EG off to the races. Huge lead. They'd love to scoop the mid tower, but they don't need it. Uh, all popped mid by nothing to say. Had a regen running, so we'll still be full HP. But Ice Ice looks like he might want to make a move here. Yep, they're immediately going to start slowing somebody down. Wasn't sure if it was nothing to say. Jin Q ends up being neither, thanks to the silence. Denies the Viper Strike. Still, though, these sort of rotations that are forced when you look at the Nature's Prophet being there, well, he can always relocate to another side of the map, so. This is such a better profit game. The support duo is so frustrated uh -huh. by these creeps constantly scouting and chasing them around. Ice is huge. Profit, nothing to really fear here. There's no hard initiation on the side of PSGLG. No, no pesky axes or sand kings to worry about clearing your creeps. So, they're just going to hit tower. Now, the way I usually like to describe these lineups, Kyle, is if this is a lineup that has to be ahead. Oh, oh, the roll in. Not quite landing, but the silence to follow it up, and that'll easily free up Abed to be able to go for the execution. Nothing to say. He's going to be underneath the sprout, plus a remnant. They do manage to get a stun immediately onto Abed. He's going to jump away thanks to the buyback. Very disciplined from EG, trying to get away and out. Abed with the last bit of mana. They're actually going to turn around on nothing to say here with the Ice Blast, just the support can kill the mid laner of LGD. Once again, the body blocks from Arteezy, netting another kill, this time on to Y, and Abed still running away. Faith Beyond desperate to be able to pick up this one kill, but it's denied. Vortex back into the roll-in, and Abed says, remember me? Thanks for the killing spree, buddy. Jin Q chased down underneath a tier two even. LGD are being hunted. And EG, I hear them coming to life behind me. A lot of sound in that last engagement. Excellent team play. Abed surviving. They kill mid tower, but they just commit. Oh, Ice, you've overextended this time, surely. Can they not get in range? Do they not? Oh, no. He's going to walk right past everybody. <laughs> they're trying to go for it, but the urn is going to heal him up a little bit more. And if they're not careful, 
They may get gone on by Abed, who now has a double damage oh, room. And the quick bottle pass over, too, so Crit gives him a couple free charges. That was a really cool fight. Faith Beyond, he's going to be able to do this throughout these engagements, but he actually dispelled the Cold Feet off of Nothing to Say with mm -hmm. his AoE Storm Spirit oh, um, nice. cleanse. He, he can also do the same to Magnetize, keep in mind. So Crit has got to be a little cautious in a way. A mm. big AoE dispel just removes Earth Spirit's ultimate from the game, but the trouble is they're uh, just behind, and Storm, way too strong at the moment, has DD, Kaya, they're looking to make moves. A big pickoff for LGD. Managing to get RTC here, but at the same time, they cannot afford to lose nothing to say again, but they will anyway. Dominating Shriek for Abed as the uh, smoke, the three man smoke that they operated early, is successful in and finding a kill. Fly also demonstrating why I like AA the most of any of these ranged intelligence support heroes. Ice Vortex. He's already got three points in it. He'll look to max it next. Next. Yep. Increased magic damage. It'll be 24% when maxed out. But it, more importantly, especially as Radiant, gives vision in the road. Long zip in with a roll in from Crit to lead things off. And Ame, they're going to roll away from me. No. Looking for the Sundry. Does manage to get it off. And Abed, he's overcommitted now. He's going to use the last bit of mana to be able to make a jump away here. And PSG LGD really want to be able to catch somebody with this. They're going to pop the primal split. Leading off, Ice 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 hit by the stun. Tornado onto the Ancient Apparition. This should net them two kills. Nice split from Faith Beyond. And, and that's the, the bane of Viper. It doesn't matter what position or what time in the meta. Brewmaster loves to play against Viper. You just chase him down with the pandas and throw him up in the air. Not much you can do about it. But well done by EG to escape with only the two losses. Very unfortunate that the Sunder was able to go off. I think maybe if Abed commits there, zips through for that one last attack with overcharge like it could be better mm -hmm. but alas it doesn't matter though Arteezy he had died top but he went maelstrom first so he'll be looking to farm up as fast as possible his BKB timing is everything in this game because PSG LGD their physical damage output is relatively limited yes the TB meta could be tough to deal with but he's a little bit behind and the death profit exorcism isn't too fearsome It'll also allow him to then commit because he has all these heroes with tons of reach. You know, Storm Spirit and Earth Spirit going to tag team, just dive in on the support duo. Arteezy with the BKB, he'll just port in as well, pop it, and ensure yeah. they can finish by with one. Another Ice Blast, another kill on nothing to say. This combination between Abed and his two supports, they're yeah. linking up so beautifully. Yeah, Earth Spirit, one of the highest damage magic supports as well. And Fly just drops a Vortex and says, hey, guys, here's more than a Veil of mm -hmm. added damage. Yeah, mix in with the Ice Blast, uh, so they have a sort of semi-global possibility of ganking. Like, Abed can make these really long jumps and have the Ice Blast uh, be set up by the Vortex. It looks good. Evil Geniuses are up by 4,000 net worth, but again, this is a lineup that needs to be able to stay ahead, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they are surely going to get outscaled by PSG LGD's lineup, right? In theory. Now they're once again... Oh, God! Nothing to say! He cannot survive, even this time around. He had the two supports behind him, but they couldn't stop Abed's damage. So they're going to trade an Earth Spirit for a Death Prophet. Now the Enchantress Which, <laughs> Like at this point, Death Prophet, not that much farther ahead in net worth than this Earth Spirit. Yeah, uh, nothing to say has nothing to do, because every time he pokes his head up middle, he just gets wiped off the face of the Earth. And you check out Faith Beyond. He's got the right read on the game. Mm -hmm. He's just Midas, Brown Boots, Soul Ring. Because, yeah, you're right. PSG LGD into the late game, much better scenario. You know, Bruce Split, TB Meta, DPXO, it's going to be a formidable force. But the trouble is, right now, they can't do anything. Yeah. They, they can't kill anyone, and they can't acquire any map control other than farming waves in front of their towers or sending TB illusions out. So maybe it's time to smoke. It looks like that may be the plan. They PSG the LGD have played this Brewmaster once before in I League about a month ago, and he did go this Brown Boots into Minus into straight Aghanim Scepter yep. Blink Dagger as his build, and even a refresher with the Aghanim Scepter. This guy knows what this hero's all about. It's the ultimate, and yep. as many primal splits as possible. Exactly. It gives you the second. Uh, it doesn't necessarily increase the uptime. Well, it does, but the replenish time just replaces the cooldown. But it's just you always have... An ult up. That's yeah. the theory, and it just yeah. means you have to wait longer if you want to take a fight at full strength. But we'll see. BKB is going to be the name of the game. PSG LGD, they got it queued up. Oh, double smoke by accident. That's very bad for them. Oh, God. A bit behind, and they accidentally two-timed it. They're yeah. fighting right on top of an EG ward if they pop on fly. Looks like that might happen. They're going to move around here, down to low ground. It pops. Immediately, the exorcism is going to go out. Jin Q. 
Trying to catch somebody here, but Crit with a turnaround. Rolls immediately onto the Shadow Shaman, gets off a two-man silence with the Magnetize. Beautifully set up, but Faith Beyond is here to be able to counteract. Crit looking to be able to roll away. Asunder goes out from Ahmed, but he is just dead. This magic damage is too much for him to handle, and that's even before Abed is here. Use the rest of his mana to catch up to nothing to say. There's a bit more for their Electric Vortex. Thank goodness Faith Beyond is there with the Storm, the Cyclone up in the air. That'll uh, deny the uh, nothing to say kill, but... That's it. That's the only person they could save. Four dead on the side of LGD. It is only fitting, Cap. First thing we said at the start of this tournament, control the armor, control the game. While things have changed over the last 11 days, and EG have learned the new tweak. It's not the physical armor. It's not the TA you got to worry about. Mm. It's actually the magical armor. The early veil on crit, the maxed vortex from fly, they easily turn it around. They also, of course, minus magic resist from the Viper right clicks with yep. Q active. So three different methods of reducing the magic damage. With Storm a Storm Spirit core that exactly. naturally outputs a ton of magic damage. Yeah, like we didn't even get to see Abed really go to work there in that last team fight. But I there. could see that like they built up that magic resistance and he zips yeah. in and he just like would crush people. Yeah. And don't forget new Furion ulti as well. A ton of magic damage at level two. It'll start at 150 with 10% plus five damage True. increased per bounce. You've also got RTZ rushing a Maelstrom. Why would you do that? Well, it's the best farming item, and it's also going to do magic DPS within the engagement. So I thought for sure EG was just going to cut and run, but they got that initiation onto the Shadow Shaman. You saw Faith Beyond went for the Dispel, but it doesn't work. Once Cold Feet has already procced, you can just Dispel it while it's still forming. So yeah. a little late on that, and PSGLG, they just get surprised. Everybody was there. EG was ready. To give you an idea of how much damage Wrath of Nature can do, you're talking about level one maxing out at around 600 damage. Level two gets closer to 800 damage. It like those last couple of hits can do an insane amount. You add some magic resistance reduction there. It's maybe even more than just pure damage if they have enough of it. Evil Genius is going to be able to find this pick off on Jin Q and turn it into a tier two. First tier two of the game down by 18 minutes. So look for that outpost to be taken. Yeah, there. This is the, the way to win Dota right now. I love this from EG. I think first game, maybe still a little tired, right? They had to win a BO3. They had mm -hmm. to wait for the Wii show to conclude. And uh, they got caught napping in that fight around the tier one. This time, it's the aggression. It's the fact that they actually have playmaking potential. You know, not like Fly played a poor clockwork, but I think Crit, much more at home on this active roaming position. It's what he's had the most success with so far in his career. And now, just better lanes, too, right? Yeah. EG's lanes oh, yeah. actually The, the lanes went really well for them this time around. Now, LGD, we talked about this in game one. They have such a strong understanding of timings, right? And being able to, to know when your lineup has this really nice peak against the enemy lineup. And we've seen them be down a, under aggressive teams before and just stall the game out until they hit a certain point. What is that turnaround point for LGD? What would that look like as uh, we're going to watch Y die again here? As uh, die again here. There it is, there it is. Okay, we got it. <laughs> they were a little concerned that there might be follow-up with that silence, but they just don't have anything to fear. So you ask, okay, well, what's the turnaround point? Probably the BKBs. Ame's about to finish his. Nothing to say, still a full recipe away. Jin Q's trying to build one. Of yeah. course, that may be... A long time. <laughs> ...half an hour from now, uh, given the current rate of the game for him. He, he's going the cool build, though, where you get a quick blink, but maxed out Hex and Shackles. So... Yeah. The thing that I love about this hero is you represent kill threat with basically any other hero in addition to yourself. Sure. It's so much lockdown, you drop wards, you can see him playing with nothing to say. That's what they're looking to do here. So similar to game one, where Evil Geniuses got to a point where they're going to try and split push as much as possible, PSG LGD is going to do something similar here. But this time around, it feels like they actually have real kill threat. Yep. Whereas last time around, we watched Evil Geniuses like smoke to no avail time and time again. It just felt like they, they couldn't actually uh, reliably get killed. So EG is going to have to be careful and guard their lead well. Otherwise, a pickoff as simple as just being able to catch Abed, say, in the bottom lane could be a massive turnaround for PSG LGD. Yeah. Of course, maybe not Abed with the uh, Aegis that he's currently rocking. That would be a little difficult. Yeah, it's all going to be the team fights because Faith Beyond, yeah. like, it feels weird, but you have to buy Midas just for the XP and to stay engaged, right? The Saiyan King has a method of just clearing waves. You're, you're going to be able to 
accelerate your own farm, no problem. Brewmaster just doesn't farm. And you can't with a Terror Blade consistently taking your waves. So he's just going to churn gold over time and eventually have Axe, which makes him a huge team fight winner. Like, the reason you don't see Brew is because I think you just get enough team fight from other heroes, but Brewmaster really is the lord of the team fight. It's going to be a tough game for it. Abed Storm specifically is in a fantastic spot, holding onto the Aegis for another two and a half minutes. So, of course, smoke out, look to get aggressive. He's got so much catch, too. A crit also. He's got a BKB queued up. That's going to be an awesome item. That's my favorite type of Earth Spirit to play. When you get ahead like this, yeah. you can just veil BKB in the middle of a fight, ignore everybody on the side of PSG LGD. Oh, I've been seeing this a lot in pubs right now. These four positions that uh, rush an early BKB, and it just feels that, like they're unstoppable. They yeah. just jump in, pop that BKB, and they're just tanky enough that they can last in a team fight rather than just being sort of the initiator that dies right off the bat. And Abed is just enormous. He's going to have an Orchid soon. Like that decision. Mm -hmm. It forces BKB by itself if he zips in with crit. And he'll be able to solo kill both supports for some time. And yeah, just push out bottom. Yolner already up on Arteezy. To be fair, is there any downside to going BKB on, on these cores, though? I, like, I feel like just because of the lineup and the magic damage we were talking about, they were always going to go BKB, so... Well, sure, but the problem is, like, specifically on Nothing to Say, like, this is not a performance we'd see from him often. He is just straight-up hood BKB. So okay. he's, again, playing for a timing that's now. They need to win a fight now. And if EG get a read on that and just try to slow things down, ensure any 5-on-5 engagement takes place in their territory where they have vision, where they have the high ground, they're out farming every minute. Yeah. And it'll really just be Ame at the end of the day that is an, a real damage threat. Somebody who's actually scaling. Yeah, Faith Beyond, Midas, not terrible, but uh, they're in a rough spot. You can just look at the map control. PSGLG, they're just mirroring. They're cutting waves. And uh, they've ceded complete control of their Ancient Triangle. Faith Beyond. Perfectly controlled in his split pushing right now, 1100 away from that Aghanim Scepter. And, uh, I'm not even sure how good this is going to feel just because the Orchid on Abed. Like, it's nice to have two charges, but what if he doesn't even get off the yeah. first one? That's the thing. It's more time needed. They, yeah. they need the BKB on him as well. Um, because he's the real save for the Orchid in a way. Like, mm -hmm. Faith Beyond, honestly, you have to play a near flawless brew to get this game. The AoE dispel on the Storm Panda is actually really underrated. But no doubt. Dead. I just don't see how who he's going to save. The damage is going to come so fast. Fly, you're in trouble. He is in trouble. And he's being chased down right now by a full PSG LGD squad. Evil geniuses will not turn around and try and save their captain. I'm going to watch Abed just make up long TP zip out. Whoa, never mind. Crit actually went in. And he caught Whoa, Faith what? Beyond. Of, huh? What? Oh, we got to see that one again. I'm assuming maybe he took a little bit of ball lightning damage. The they hit him with the ice blast. Yeah. And then Crit saw, saw, okay, he's low enough. I can just commit to this. I was still at camera on Abed. Yeah, I mean, Crit just crushed him. He didn't even magnetize. That was so much damage. But yeah, you're right. The, the ice blast hit. I don't know. They're going to force out that BKB, or at least try to anyway. Nothing to say. He's going to be keeping it under control here. The Bloodstone, it's going to go off, but the damage is coming so fast they get the kill. Abed falls, and a monster kill streak goes to nothing to say. That is 741 gold for him. Of all the heroes to feed to DP, that is not the move. And PSG LGD, they know too. They're going to try and tilt Abed, though I have heard that this man is untiltable but uh, maybe Emo can claim otherwise. Yeah, he's still one of the most consistent players in the scene. I wouldn't put that finals on Abed. That was just IG coming through with some new stuff, but questionable. They saw the BKB. They knew he had one. I like the play if he zips back immediately, right? Oh, we yeah. tried to force it. He, you know, kept his discipline, conserved the cooldown, but he zips into the fog and just boom, the instant hex that Effie was talking about being a concern and they just blow everything. There's no BKB on Abed. The silence came out from Crit, but nothing to say the Orchid had faded by that point, so he hit with the AoE silence. It was a great ward trap, and they get a kill on maybe not the most important player on EG, because Arteezy's farm is actually pretty huge. He's actually outpacing the Terrorblade. He'll have an AC finished and just 300 gold. And I've heard tell that 
Prophet kind of not out carries Terrorblade, but he out carries him like in this way in this kind of game. You're ahead, you control the map. Um, so you you just like if you can stay ahead by you know ten thousand net worth, let's say you can go pretty late yeah. against the team. Even okay. Eventually, you're gonna buy a hex like. They're going to have tools to kill Terrorblade. He'll have the damage output because PSG, LGD, their lineup is ultimately moving closer and closer to a four protect one single core. Yep. Yes, the other cores provide a ton of team fight, but they're not going to get their slots finished the same way EG's other two cores will. Right. And the support duo of EG is definitely going to output more damage. We shall see the brewings of a big fight upcoming. AC complete. The Rod of Atos is going to come out first for the four staff. Will defend against the ice blast. Ice, ice, ice. Forced down to low ground here to get away. <laughs> He's gonna defend that ward with his life, it seems. Ice, ice, ice. Gonna be caught by the hex, though. Immediately counter. Initiation there from Abed. Silence is up, Jin Q. Arteezy looks to finish him off. The Sprout actually blocking him in, but Jin Q, as a man, turns around and shackles up Artur before he finally dies to crit. Now, PSG LGD are not quite sure what to do here. They've popped that Brewmaster ultimate. The primal split is out. He has axe, though. This is one more if he needs it. He's got another one to go here. He may try and pop it. If he's gonna pop it, he needs to do it now before the jump comes in, and he does. He turns around, immediately suns up crit. Here comes, nothing to say, blocking out crit, not allowing him to be able to roll away. They want the kill on the support because that's all they can get right now. A BKB used by Ame and even fearfully popping this. Oh no, that Sunder just lights and nothing to say. He's dead. Another time, another no BKB. Abed's gonna go for more Faith Beyond. He will be able to TP away. No interrupt nearby, but I feel like I've seen Ame do that before in both this tournament and previous ones. I don't blame him. He's playing somewhat selfishly. He didn't have BKB, but yeah, nothing to say. You gotta be cautious. He had vision, which is what's weird. Like, he had vision of that high ground and just charged up it. If he BKBs there, that's a sick play. Abed was real low on mana. Maybe you can turn that around. Full health meta TB behind you. Yeah. But uncharacteristic, and EG hold on to their lead. Ame, with the betrayal on nothing to say, will keep farming. He's trying to win this game solo, it seems. Has 17,000 net worth. Is only 1,500 behind RTZ, who uh, is going to be going for an Eon disc. So once again, we're going to be seeing that item put to use as the game goes late to make sure there's no free beat pickoffs. It's somewhat necessary because he fears the roster, right? That's the 100 to 0 that yep, could take yep. him down. This would allow him to cleanse into the immediate BKB. So team fights could be troublesome, but it means he can split push a lot safer. They oh, don't have any BKB TP interrupt. Going through some of the potential items that have been picked up or will be picked up. I have to say that Aghanim Scepter is probably the most exciting one for the Storm Spirit. Pulling them into both the Earth Spirit and Ancient Ooh. Apparition AoEs, is, that sounds pretty good to me. And they, uh, they gave that first shard, though, to Arteezy. The Sprout making greater treants. It used to be broken. The first uh, couple weeks with that addition yeah, yeah. were really silly. And I just saw greater treants killing Raxes by themselves. But still effective, and it'll help him farm faster and keep lanes shoved. You can see the EG MO right now. The three cores slowly grinding out a net worth lead. Arteezy keeping tabs on Ame. And the other cores on the side of PSG LGD they're kind of drifting drifting further and further behind. They have their items online, they want to fight. But if they can't fight, well, they're just kind of running in circles. Yeah. I will say that I think Faith Beyond is going to be kind of okay because he's just a primal split most of the time anyway, but I'm really concerned about nothing to say his net worth drifting lower and lower down the list here as now he's behind Ice 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 on the Viper. I want to talk about this Viper build a little bit because uh, was it you that we were talking about Cuckoo's Viper, how he built up a damage build? Maybe it was Curtis, but uh, going to be going for like more of the utility style the Viper to start things off with the Rod of Atos and, and the Urn rather than the Dragonlance Treads build. I don't mind it. Oh, he has no... Is he dead? Yeah, yes. he's dead. Uh, Ice Blast is coming in hot. Or maybe cold, and that will be the death of Faith Beyond. 26 to 13 now in game two of this best of five evil geniuses looking Ooh. to even out the series. He's got a shard on ice, too. Now a poison attack affecting buildings, reducing yeah. its armor by one per stack. So now they like, that is very clear. You only get oh. that pickup, really, when you uh, want to go high ground. So, But it also gives you an increase on max stacks, so it's even more potential minus magic resistance as well. Mm -hmm. 
That's pretty cool. That's for hero damage. So, yeah, the, the Storm AA output is actually going to be kind of crazy now. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dagon's picked up. But high ground against PSLD, this is real tough. Um, to your point about the build, yeah, I think that the four staff was just needed. I also really like that they got one early on the side of PSG LGD because you need it to avoid that deadly Atos, Nether Tops, and Ice Blast combination. The force yeah. away will save somebody. And yeah, they're actually going to get one onto Ame as well because he realizes more forces are going to be necessary. Okay. Just keep building it up. And this is a cool read as well. I, again, going back to the AA, yeah. if you remember the three time Leshrac from PSG LGD yesterday, it was all about the spell lifesteal, the healing amplification. Right, well, AA right. removes that, and you notice nothing to say. He didn't change his build. Hood, a BKB, but he's now going for the Sanj Kaya. So, again, playing around that self-regen amplification, but it won't be effective if he gets blasted. It won't be as effective if he gets hit by, say, a Viper with Scotty, which is, of course, going to be Ice's next item. Yeah, the way you put that, it really makes it seem like this uh, ancient apparition and just this heavy amount of magic damage in general seems to be a... Good game plan for Evil Geniuses against what PSG LGD has done the best with. Now they are five band smoked across. Ice 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 is going to go for that one extra oh, creep so wave. TP out, but he's caught. Shin Q. Great blink in. Hex by him. And uh, the first big pickoff we've seen in a minute here for PSG LGD. Unfortunately, they can't really take much map control off of that because these damn treants are everywhere. It's like an infestation. PSG LGD, I'm going to try and deal with that as best as possible. Very nice. Oh, Abe. Jump forward, does manage to find Jin Q. Gonna go for the fast Shadow Shaman kill. They do manage to get again. The cleanse coming out from the purge, but sadly, Jin Q is low enough that he dies to the right click of Arteezy. Arteezy actually copping a bit of damage here. They try to force Devum up into the base here. They know he's got an Aegis, so they, they can't overcommit for this kill. They're gonna go for it now. All right, that's gonna be one. Ame. Setting up around the second life here. So is the rest of the team. They're going to go for RTZ almost immediately. Artur trying to deal with this one. The Eunt is going off. Slowed down by the Scotty. Ame, they're trying to force staff through the trees and will manage to kill RTZ. Looking for more now. Force staff up. Faith Beyond. Ooh, a little bit too late to get that disable out. Still, though, managing to kill Ice during the pickoff. And then Evil Genius is getting a little bit too aggressive. Loses their carry in. RTZ, we're back down to a 9,000 net worth lead only for EG. They cannot I... afford too many of those mistakes, Kyle. No, they can't. And it's just uncharacteristic. Like, if you're going to commit for the Rasta kill, get it. Finish the mm. kill. Commit early. But they took this sort of delayed team fight. They'd used all of Storm's Mana Pool and Ice Blast. And then they were looking to commit later into the oh, fight. They are like, not respecting this, Scotty. Thankfully, no. the double force staff got the wrong angle, and uh, Ame ended up on the low ground rather than on the high ground where he could have maybe chased down Crit some more. It's just that's getting dangerous. Eg, yeah, gotta chill a bit. I I like the aggression, but I just want them to do it as a unit. Like, be strong. And if you're gonna make that kind of play. I would love it. You know, Abed, he's got the Aeon disc. I kind of wish if they were going to play it in this manner that they had just bought BKB. Like mm. you, yeah. you look at the net worth lead. Yes, it's 9K, but you got to keep in mind how much money has been spent on these Eons. It, it feels on... like they, they were overly focusing on the pickoff potential and as a result, sacrifice some of their team fight potential. Yeah, exactly, because that's a lot of dead gold now on both Arteezy and Abed. Your top two net worth cores have spent a lot of money on an item that just saves them from a pickoff. And yeah, it could be useful in a team fight, but you saw how well our Taurus served him in that fight. It's sure, yeah. Like, it, it's not really a lead. And Ame's Terror Blade, this is the hyper carry. This will utilize net worth better than any other hero in the game. Going for the Swift Blink, I actually a big fan because positioning is going to win the war here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if he can spend more time getting in the face of evil geniuses and right-clicking and less time trying to chase after heroes, it's going to feel mighty nice for PSG LGD. This is a big difference between game one. There was a lot of similarities in the first 15 minutes, but game one, to be honest, EG, I feel like they had zero chance.
Even yeah. if they pushed the game another 10, 15 minutes, it felt like their lineup wouldn't be able to compete. But we know PSG LGDs, yeah. this, this uh, Terror Blade, it can work. This has been the story of the tournament for PSG LGD. When they win, it's dominant. When they lose, it's a grind. Yeah. Like they, they, there is no just 20 to 3 walkover. They make you earn it. You're going to need to grind like you know three Roches, four Roches. Your item decisions have to be on point. You don't get the free team fight. They're not mm -hmm. going to just lose a core here, lose a core there. Oh, oh guess who won? Take the base. They make you beat them five on five, oftentimes more like five on eight, because they'll have the buybacks ready. In this case, now bots on the Death Prophet. He will not have a buyback for now. Ame has his. Faith Beyond has the Agonims. Oh, love it. He has the locked Vitality Booster, so he can nice, assemble Eon nice. if necessary. Refresh our next item. And the Ceremonial Robes, the Earth Spirit will carry that aura. Minus Magic Damage, minus Magic Resistance and Status Resistance. 1200 AOE, very effective. You know, they keep on... Uh... Arteezy even risking a few hits himself with the double siege wagon push. Uh, this tier three may end up being the first to fall here. PSG LGD. All right, they're here in force. Evil geniuses will back up. They're immediately going to smoke on PSG LGD here. The, the wrath of nature used in Roshan. Not spawning, but it could have. So yeah. they have to get out there. Yeah, it's a have. long spawn. They got to get some control of the map. They got to get some wards down. Hopefully they get a pick off with this. That's what they're hoping, but they're not going to find it. Arteezy, he teleported to top, and now he's at bottom. He's going all in for the right click. Any Say chance panic. that they keep this going, that they, they keep wrapping through and through and through. They check the Roshan pit just to see if it was an early spawn. It's not. It's a late one. It's going to be another two minutes. And if they don't show soon, Evil Geniuses will hit that high ground again. And they're going to force PSG LGD to mass TP back. It's going to be too late. Tier 3 is definitely dead. Arteezy going to keep it going here. But oh, immediately the blink in from Ame. He's going for Arteezy here. The Eon Dis, the four staffs are trying to get Artur out of here. He turns around. BKB activated. Goes Satanic as much as possible. The Ice Blast is going to whiff. The roll on it from Crit is trying to stall out the damage of the Terror Play, but it overwhelms oh, Arteezy. And look at the suck. Nothing to say. Managing to take on three members of Evil Geniuses at one time. Two of them die. Up and long zip in, but the Hex, the Hex. Is that oh going to be enough? They turn around, trying to finish off Ame. He's pumping out the damage. Ame, he doesn't get him. The Orchid does, though. They weren't able to dispel that one. They get Ame. What a disaster it would have been for Evil Geniuses if they couldn't get that one carry. They trade four, though, for the two, three, excuse me, of PSG LGD. They did get a buyback on the Enchantress, but man... Like the, the killer instinct from PSG LGD. Ame just goes. Blink yeah. forward, meta, BKB, attack. And Artur, he has no hope but to turn and fight. Unfortunately, it just didn't look like they're ready. You saw Fly just kind of threw out the Ice Blast in a panic with everybody. And that gave nothing to say. The freedom to do exactly what he's doing at, on your screen. Just everywhere. Kills the Viper by himself. Full HP. If he's not Ice Blasted, he fears nothing. God, look at this reaction. Shinkyu turns around somehow. Barely outside Ow. of that vortex. Oh my god, that was so close. If he gets pulled, those three are dead. They're all, dead. Dead. They're They're all, all dead. dead. Abed lives very likely. Crit might be able to get out. Eh, Crit probably dies anyway. Yeah, Abed but Abed had a cheese. Gonna live. He had a cheese and wasn't oh. able to use it. He was full CC'd. You're Did talking he... about like 50 range. The, like the smallest margin on that pull of the vortex. He catches Jin-Q. Oh. It potentially would have been a huge loss for PSG LGD. Instead, it's a huge win. Once again, back to that 9,000 net worth lead for Evil Geniuses. But the game is stalling out, Kyle. This net worth lead is not the same as it was 15 minutes ago, no, right? It's not. No, it is not at all. And, and suddenly, it actually feels like PSG LGD are taking control of the game. This Roche pit will be where the battleground is marked. They're all moving forwards. No refresher yet on Faithman, but he has a buyback, so will happily be the one to be initiated upon. It's an opportunity. Evil Geniuses return to being able to control this game. Oh, force the Aeon. That's or big. a chance for PSG LGD to break EG. It all happens around this Roshan Bist. The Aeon Disc is going to be popped on Faith Beyond, so he won't be able to play that high the uh, frontline game again. You've got to be careful now because the Shadow Shaman has a BKB. Yeah. This is where things get a little scary. Look at that flicker. 
I'm, I'm surprised nobody's taking that just because the Dispel would be really nice to have for even just a support against Abed's Orchid. Another Dispel, this time for uh, Stormcrafter for Ice. Or at least he finds that, rather. EG, they have an advantage in the pit, though, because they have these tools of acquiring vision. Vortexes are going to start appearing everywhere. They're going to jump in. in. All right. They pop so many ultimates here. Evil Geniuses, if they can cleanly back away, it's okay. But they do have to stay around the pit somehow because Ame, he's put out the damage pretty fast. The Ice Blast, it's going to be able to spot it. Here comes oh. Ame. Can he pick it he up again? He gets it. He gets the Roshan. He gets the Aegis. And he gets out. Evil Geniuses rolling on in with crit. He's not going to let him get away so easily. But the block from Y, it allows the, the uh, Terror Blade to be able to take up and turn around with the Sunder. And they kill crit. Arteezy, man fighting right now against Shin Q. Nothing to say, but now Ame has joined the fight. And now that is a fight that RTZ cannot win. This is a fight that Ahmed may be caught in. Ice, ice, ice to get a swept up on. Ahmed oh. dropped down to the ground. Goes for Jin Q. Has York on him. A nice pull. Managed to catch the other support as well. Pops a cheese. Trying to get back up. He has the agent so he can still play this one out. Waiting for the second lives of RTZ. He's going to be coming in. Ahmed backing up here. They're not going to keep chasing after LGD because they know they do not have the numbers for it. Ice. Dead for 60 seconds, they may have gotten barely a Dude. victory inside of the Roshan pit by grabbing the Aegis, but ultimately, Kyle, it doesn't feel that good for EG. No, not at all. I mean, Abed is playing out of his mind. He got thrown down from the tornado and had the immediate Orchid pre-Hex. Otherwise, he just dies to Jin Q. Amazing plays by Faith Beyond. He basically wins this fight. Ame, once again, forces EG into a move. They yep. somewhat panic. Crit just kind of rolls forward, and now he's alone because Abed has already got what he came for and zipped out. Crit continues to pursue. Fly is way out of position. He's in the river for some reason, so he dies. Crit chasing a Terror Blade alone up the high ground. Now he's dead, so it's suddenly a three on five. You see RTZ, again, no choice but to man fight. The blink from Ame playing huge dividends as he just gets perfect positioning, but the support duo of EG have got to just chill out. They have got to relax. PSG LGDs, they're getting all these spells of watch here. Abed's going to come down, immediate the Orchid. Otherwise, he's dead 100%. Tries to go in, gets a three-man pull. He's literally doing everything that he can. But there's just no damage, and Ame is killing everyone. Everyone. Yeah, this Nature's Prophet, it just cannot hold a flicker of a flame to the bright burning bonfire that is Ame's carry Terra Blade right now. He is just destroying these team fights. Yeah, and I agree with Arteezy's decision. He has a rapier queued up because yeah. in this item build, he forgot that he actually had to deal damage. And Eon is going to Satanic, it's cool, but he's dying with Satanic active. Yeah. It's the regen reduction. The mm -hmm. Shivas plus the Scotty, yeah, that item's worthless, Artor. It's like 30% effective. And you don't do any damage, especially to a Terra Blade. Here comes another so one. 46 Blink armor. Hex. Ice, ice, ice. I believe he used his buyback on that last one, so he is going to be dead for a while. 80 seconds with no buy available. LGD are going to start taking objectives. LGD are going to force more mistakes out of evil geniuses. I don't know how you come back from this one, man. EJ, if you were going to win this game, you had a huge lead. 20 minutes ago, it has dwindled away. It's a level 25 on your Death Prophet. Wards get dropped, and that's a meta TB. They're just, they're just pushing. Yep. He's level 25. Ah, Ben. He's going to have to do some of those zipping shenanigans. He's got to watch out for Shin Q, though. You can see him lying in wait in the trees, ready for his opportunity to be able to blink hex. Meanwhile, the buildings are falling fast, and EG can do nothing to stop it. He kills the creep wave, but ultimately, LGD, they got what they came for. They're just so composed, Cap. Like yeah. I said, they make you beat them, and EG just haven't played clean enough. With this huge lead, it doesn't feel like they've got a single engagement on their terms. They found pickoffs, but every team fight, somehow, even with a huge disadvantage, it was PSG LGD kind of forcing the action. Sure. When Ame commits, mm -hmm. they all go. EG discombobulated. They've lost their lead. Now the 9K advantage rests for their opposition. PSGLG looking dominant. A game up in the series, and at this rate, soon to be two. Look at the buildup from uh, Abed. He got the shard. He, he, he recognizes that his other cores are not putting out enough damage. So he is going to give them a little bit of helping hand and give them some overload charges to work with and then finish up his BKB. Meanwhile, Refresher. Terror Blade. 
Refresher on Death Prophet. Refresher on Brewmaster. Three oh cores that are ultimate dependent and making sure that they can always fight. So cool from LGD. It really is. And Ame, I, I don't... He has 4,000 health, a Satanic, a BKB, the Refresher that you mentioned, and a six-second cooldown on Sunday. Like, EG, yeah. they're lacking damage. Like, that's the issue with the whole draft now. It was great, the stacking magic resist. It's like, whoa, they're, just, they're killing everything. People explode. Well, we're too late in the game now. Mm -hmm. It's a cute combination, but who's actually going to right-click your way home? They're just going to walk up high ground and pop their spells. They have even the wolf creep, thanks to Enchantress. There has been a net worth lead for Evil Geniuses the entirety of the game, but now it's LGD. 9k up, all in. Evil Geniuses with a Divine Ray for Arteezy jumping in at the back. They're going for Ame right away, but the damage, it is pitiful. Arteezy, he now needs to be able to find a way out of here. Their Glimmer can't, they don't have anything. He's just going to die. He's feeding away the rapier. He has no buyback. He has no buyback, Evil Geniuses. That's it for them in game two, it's looking like, unless the four of them can do something without their carry, the pull in whoa, onto the whoa. whoa! What was that? BKB is activated, immediately a buyback coming out from Ame. He still has that refresher to work with, so he's gonna be joining his team. Boots are traveling in. As the, he needs the BKB, we've just witnessed the magical burst from EG is still there. Pops a meta. Respecting evil geniuses and their magic damage, keeping his distance. Another ice flash, but pops a BKB. He's going for the throne and he's gonna ignore evil geniuses' magic damage. He will ignore the roll in from crit and end the game. PSG LGD and a best of five grand finals are now up 2 0. They're just so sick, Cap. I, I, uh, EG making mistakes. No ifs, ands, or buts. They're going to need to clean things up as a unit because PSG LGD, they may have five players, but they're acting as if they have only the one mind. Every single time they commit, it just looks like they're unstoppable. Like, this game, they shouldn't have any business winning. They're talking about 12k gold, like 20-something minutes in. They've lost all of these towers, and yet they're somehow the ones that feel like the aggressors when we get into that juicy late game and everything is decided by team fights. <laughs> PSG LGD just looking like a sick team right now in this grand finals. Evil Geniuses at the last major, the Singapore major, they were up 2 0. And then true. we had that infamous moment where Emo managed to break EG with a question mark. Now, I'm not sure what EG needs. I'm not sure if they need an exclamation point or a closed bracket or something, but they, they got to turn the series around with uh, something a little different, Kyle. I think so. Hey, it would be a really interesting reversal of fate mm. if somehow they get a third game, they drop something spicy in all chat. It's a lot of uh, similarities, but <laughs> I don't know, man. They're going to need to play a bit better because right now PSG LGD steamrolling. Oh, yeah, they absolutely are. Let's go ahead and check in with Rich. It's looking like that curse that Arteezy bears is even stronger than the curse that Kyle puts on teams when he makes a prediction for them. And uh, look, let's be completely honest, AUI, pretty tough to be an NA Dota fan right now, but at least we're not European. True. Good copium right there. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, China coming into this, everybody said, hard, like one of the hardest regions to beat. But when we actually do look at it, I, I think that uh, all of a sudden it became very apparent that it wasn't really the region itself. It was LGD that was looking like the dominant team from that region. And we need to talk about all of the things that happened.